Icon. That would help. There you go. Okay, and then we will move on to adoption of the minutes. Uh, when Paul sent out the notice of the meeting, he sent you a copy of the minutes of the move previous meeting. Move to approve. Second. And we have a second. Uh, any changes? I'm, I'm totally unclear on this after all these years. Do I abstain because I was not in You can. Uh, Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And then we have the one abstention. Okay, since this meeting is being broadcast, we will now give a couple of minutes. If someone is watching and would like to f um, make a phone call, uh, the number is 715-538-1770. So we'll give a couple of minutes if you'd like to make a call. And if you don't during that time we'll accept it basically any time uh it says corp council oh i'm sitting in corp council spot Good morning, um, Rob Grover, Trimple County's Economic Development and Tourism Coordinator. Just hopping on real quick, uh, just to give my perspective. I know uh, this committee has been talking about, you know, what the the process might be for the ARPA monies that are coming in um, <laughs> over the next year. And you know, I, I I agree with the committee that you've been really just you know kind of prudent on not rushing into any process or how you're going to allocate the monies or anything like that. I, We're calling it. Well, yeah, it is true because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to just spend the money and then it's not there. But I just, I'm just going to give my perspective a little bit, and you can take it for what it's worth. I'm sure you're getting lots of perspectives from all sorts of different departments and members of the community. Um, I, you know, I know there's been discussion about the executive finance committee being the the group that decides where that money goes. I mean, I I think that could be a good process. I also think, you know, I, I liked some things about how the CapEx 2020 process worked a little bit with that committee. There's probably some ways that could be improved as well. But um, I, just giving my perspective that as we're looking at where that, what, $5.7 million is going, it, you know, if we could have, I think it's good to bring um, more stakeholders in. You know, a lot of different groups were, were affected by the pandemic, still are being affected. And obviously with my job, you know, I work with um, entrepreneurs, business uh, business people, business interests, um, helping them both grow and thrive, and then helping promote the county as a tourism destination. So, um, and I think it just, it, it might be good to bring in some, some other stakeholders as well, establish a committee. You know, as you guys know better than me, this is a kind of a once in a lifetime infusion of funding into the county. And just to have as, as I would think a, Diverse in the sense of you know just people from from different backgrounds and um, and different areas of the county involved in in how that money gets distributed. I mean, I think that would be prudent. Um, you know, whatever decision you guys make, I think will be the right one. But um, yeah, I just know know you know a lot of us are are starting to think. Well, where do we think, in our opinions, could be good places for this money to go? And you know, how do we make sure that? You know, no one, everyone's voice is kind of heard. So again, if it is this group, I'm sure you'll do a great job with that. Obviously, you have a lot of experience deciding where, you know, a taxpayer dollars go. Um, but I, I would suggest maybe, if you're open to it, maybe bringing some more players to the table. So, because I just know a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of folks in the county are just interested where this is going to go. And you know, I, I would love to try to use some of it in the very least to help promote. Um, I promote the economy within Trumpelow County, and I've, you know, I've got some different ideas on how we could do that. Lots of departments have different ideas on, on where the stuff should go. Lots of people were affected by it, so I get that. So anyway, that's my two cents, you know, and um, yeah, I look, look forward to um, whatever you guys decide on how you're going to go forward with that, and if I can be useful, I would really like to be. So anyway, have a, have a good meeting. Okay, thank you. We don't need luck. <laughs> okay, we don't have any calls, and I think we've given people a chance. And like I said, if you do want to call, still feel free to do so. Okay, Paul, you have a county sales tax update for us? Sure. Um, the amount this time was $194,629.69, which is lower than last year and the year before. 
Uh, but if you look at the total year to date, at 1,012,000 compared to last year, 842,000, we're way ahead of, and 838 the year before. So we're way ahead of what. Um, we're actually we, $169,736.12 ahead. Well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't do that part. I just, so that's the that's sales tax. Okay. Any questions for Paul on the sales tax part? Okay, moving on then to the general fund. And there were no changes on that one from last month, so we're still at 1,857,707.50. Okay, any questions on the general fund update? Next month we'll have the, the updated updated because uh, the auditor's finished. We had to have our report into um, Department of Revenue by actually by today is the deadline, but we did it on Friday and got it done. So there will go ahead, Paul or Tim. We got the half of it. Half of it is Lori's got it invested. Yeah, I have it in a separate account. Yeah. Right. We've only gotten half. Have you got any guidelines as far as spending? We can get to that when we get down to. Um, 8G. <laughs> In front of you, you have a. a oh. <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's okay. I think we had mentioned it at the last meeting somewhat, and we were kind of looking to let things slide a little bit. And we'll talk about it. We, then, we could talk about it then. Cause yep. Okay. Anything else on the general fund update? Okay. Now our to our department reports. Uh, first of all, our county treasurer, Laurie. You should have received the report. This is the mail. Yep. Yeah. Our interest is down quite a bit from last year. You know, it's like 200,000 down. And even what I budgeted, I don't think I'm going to make that for this year because it's just hanging, you know, almost at nothing where we're getting hardly any interest. The only way it's probably going to go up is if the feds try to combat inflation. But otherwise they're talking that it's going to stay low for quite a while. The, the funds you've invested from like our part, are you including those interest on those funds? It's right, it's it's listed on here. Yes. Even with even with that influx of extra, the American Rescue Plan, it says. Even with that influx of extra money, we still are not making budget. Not when you're getting 0 .04%. Yeah. <laughs> zero four percent. Yeah. Point zero, not point four, point zero four. Right. And then four percent. cents on a hundred dollars. Yeah. It's. They have nothing to do with each other, but I find it at least interesting that our sales tax is up two hundred thousand dollars and our interest is down two hundred thousand okay. dollars. It's like we can't get a break here, you know. Right. Can I just jump in Go for ahead, a second Paul. there too when we get down talking about ARPA monies? This is one place where there's lost revenues that our ARPA money could cover. Sure. So that's what are you talking about? Interest. Uh, interest, loss, yeah. Loss on interest. Loss in we can do that for. Oops. We can do that for about four years or three years for sure, because we have to have it kind of decided what we're going to spend it on by 2024, but we don't have to have it spent till 2026. So we'll talk more about that in there. Well, and then you said the interest rate's so low, and beside that, we're down two hundred thousand dollars. Plus, you got nine million extra invested. Right, <laughs> right. The, yeah. That really, it's a double it's kick. It's really low. Yeah. Did uh, property tax collections are they as usual below? Above? It's hard to tell yet it's because okay. the last day to mail it out was Saturday, oh, okay. so we'll still be getting a lot of mail yet this week. Okay. Any, Any questions on Questions that? for Lori? Otherwise, the only other thing really happening in our office is I did 
start posting for Deanna's replacement. She's going to be leaving at the end of October. So we're taking applications right now for that. So hopefully we get a lot of good applicants. How many years has she been in the office? In that office, it's probably been like 18 years. And in Paul's office before then, an extension before then? Was she was up in the health department. Health department, that's yeah. it. So do you have a timeline yet for when applications are due? Or? They'll be due August 13th. Okay. It goes in the paper this week. Okay. And then who takes care of the interviewing for that? You and? And um, human resources. Okay. Okay. Any questions for Lori? Thank you very much. And then we move on to Rose. Well, mine is on the ARPA funds. I, um, that's what that um, what I handed out was um, the media conversion agreement. We have a lot of documents in our office. There's only one of a kind, um, and the genealogists look at them. So right now we have to actually stand by them and show them because they're all paper. So um, we're looking at possibly having less contact with people so that we'd have them scanned so they can look on the computer themselves rather than having to be there to watch. Because if um, the documents get out of order, you're, there's no way of finding them. There's just a stack of loose papers is what it is. So we, right now, um, so that's what I'm asking if um, that would be considered Right now, it's kind of preliminary. I just had them come in so that I could present something to you. Um, the, one of them is for masking, and one of them is without masking. masking is Covering up the documents that don't pertain. There's, you know, there's several documents on one page. Um, so they would be masking that to cover up, so there'd be just one document per. We do that, the, the contractor or yeah th this is on um, the actual scan um, company that will do the scanning and we will go through our um, land records fiddler is what it's called we would go through them and they actually would help us get it so that the um, genealogist could look at it online There are some land records in there also that we did not have scanned. Um, so at this point, I, I sent a request to them to give me a breakdown as to how much everything cost. Each, each individual um, group of um, documents that I asked for to be scanned. So I'm waiting for that. And like I said, <coughs> it's just really preliminary right now. It's just to um, bring it to your attention that I'm looking at some of the ARPA funds also. So you would need some extra money then? From the ARPA funds, correct. Is this looking like 48,000? About that. It's not a firm number. Um, I just had them come in and give me a, an, uh, an estimate. Um, so they would have to actually come in and do a more detailed. But um, it's more of a, just to give you an idea that that's what I'm looking at. I think we have till 2024 to come up with something, correct, Paul? Well, so. this is, I mean, Saving these significant historical documents is an important thing, not just for genealogists, but for everybody. For yes. everybody, and the um, um, fifty thousand dollars is not too much for that. And but there is something I've been reading ahead here, and, and it talks about a um, um, Oh, totals are based on a 24-hour on-site access for scanning. So basically, they could potentially be here all day for seven days. They'd have like rotating crews coming in to do the scanning. That's how they did it when we had our records. We right. had all of our records scanned. So we did do that. And at that time, we had the sheriff's <coughs> department. They allowed them in. And I would come in and check on them. They were here on, and that was a large project. Where yeah. this, they said, might not be as a large project. So mm -hmm. they may just be here a couple of days. So I would only have to come in and, you know, and just to make sure they're set up, everything is okay. And then I don't stay here all night with them or anything. Right. But 
Yeah, they have crews come in and go back and forth. And, and this is the same outfit that, that scanned the, the other documents? Correct, and they did a wonderful job. Yeah. So that's more of an update of what's coming. It's more, yep. Have you thought about just doing a project initiation, putting it in your budget, seeing if we're feeling generous this year? <laughs> Might be might be worth <coughs> going both ways that way. Maybe getting it done sooner. Too. Yeah, and they said that they would, um, you know, squeeze us in with because they have a lot of registers are putting in for these type of projects. So they would probably squeeze me in when they're in this area. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what they're looking at right now. And everybody's um, kind of everything on hold until the SARPA funds. Everybody decides what they're going to do with them. Okay. Any questions for Rose? Just, just one comment, for Rosa. I, what I'm, what I'm, what I, what I'm picking up here is a, a justification for the, this project based on uh, that would that would justify using ARPA funds based on reducing actual face-to-face -face contact. Correct. So that I think that would probably be if we're going to go any further with this to, to stress that that would be a legitimate. You could come to this committee and say that's a legitimate. This is a legitimate reason for asking for the money because it would be th that much less human contact. Correct. This would prevent it. Uh, I do regret all this. <laughs> it's all we're doing is reducing human contact. I don't know what I'm. I, I, you. Got it, I think, but think we need more of that. I, you're right. I, you know, I'm not sure that's right. But if you if if your goal is to use the ARPA money is to find a justification for using the ARPA money, then that's it. I think as a justification. I would agree. That was the purpose of that. That money. was the purpose of the money. So. Okay. Anything else for Rose? Anything else for us, Rose? Or no, that's it. Thank you so much for. Thank the you for coming. Okay. I don't see Brett either and I don't see Tim that was the addition to the agenda It would be several weeks old, but yes, yeah, I've seen that. Oh yeah, I had sent this to Sheriff and to Kurt, and they both said it was acceptable for them. Um, subject to change, of course, by committee. So. Well, we, we have to almost well, pass that. <laughs> we almost have to pass that today, so we can get to the report, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Well, the way you we talked, said, anyway, said we, that you were going to have it on the agenda for August. Yeah, and have a special uh, committee meeting at six o'clock right. beforehand. Yeah, six o'clock. No. No, the six um, o'clock. The, the, the building oversight, oversight committee. Oh, oh, okay. Just to bring them up to date, what's happening, and then. And then right have them at. The, meeting we can and then have them at the county board meeting when they're. They're done. Yeah, this was verbally approved. So when we get maybe, I, I don't know. Okay. You, okay. I don't know. Do you want to jump down to that now, number nine? Yeah, we could do that. And then maybe if we could get it to the office and somebody could contact Brett and Tim. Well, then if you can. Okay. Down to number nine then. You want to? The, the, key, the key player there was the judge. It, was, it had to be approved by the, comp, the court administrator, Pat Brummond. That's what we were waiting on. So that's uh, the linchpin right here. Okay. Yeah. Then do Tim too, because he's not here. Well, I'm sure they're watching. It. No, that's why I, I watched up there, and they're not. Okay. Should we move to number nine then? Well, there are a couple of items on the agenda which we could do. Yeah, E, we could deal with the census. Yes. You could update us on oh. that, Paul. Okay. If you want to jump to that. Yeah, AD? we'll jump to that, and hopefully the other two will make it by then. Okay. Uh, Kim Robertson said that he is not in the office today, but we'll be not able to attend. Then he won't get that resolution done today. When we Unless, just, we well, just technically we could because three of you are on property. property. Yep. We, and we, so we you approved can, it at the property. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So. Let's. 
let's okay down to county redistricting timeline um you know what i, I'll I put a, a thing on your desk it looks like this oh yes okay. and that's all i have so far um the state did change that august 16th to august 23rd is when we will get the information from census and then that starts out this timeline and it's it's very aggressive we have to have it done and uh, so I'm thinking that this committee if that's who's going to do the the redistricting um, it's who it has in the past plus Anne and myself is what it has been in the past so I mean we're gonna have to start setting up some schedule a bunch of meetings who do we schedule the meetings with just just here our, just this yep, committee because yep. once we get the information then we have to do our plan we have to have it done by uh, September nope take it back October 18th and then, the first and then that nope no September 15th because then we have to send it to the municipalities so that they agree with it and then um, the municipalities by October 18th have to give it back to us and then uh, October 18th is when we have to finalize or start finalizing in November 3rd to 10th uh, finalize and have it to the state by around that time because then we have to publish in the paper the notice of the spring election for county board November 23rd all under that first entry August 23rd PL data what is that PL probably somewhat population or population plan. Well, well, I mean we could it's, it's fantasize the, forever about the PL. The, the, I, I, the census is going to have it to us so that PL must be I guess I never looked at that part but population they get it to us population lab it could be the, po the state population lab gets the da data transmitted to the counties then we begin drafting the tentative plan August 23rd so we get big maps and markers and no, it's we all don't get online it's no. all online oh, we don't get you're so embedded so in the past I, George. I, I want an easel I it's want to get we'll probably red lines we should really reserve the Wisconsin room for that so it can be up on that big screen okay in there oh, but <laughs> so is that possibly setting a meeting date late this month then we should probably right <laughs> around the 23rd or right thereafter so Paul, what and Ann, what you, the, you've done this before? Why don't you just tell us what it is we're going okay. to be asked to do? Well, the, your first thing you're going to do at your first meeting is decide if you're going to stay at 17 county board supervisors, or change. Okay. Okay. That's, that's once one you've thing. decided one, that. There's one contention. Okay. That is. Uh, there you go. Okay. Once <laughs> once you've decided that, be fun. then you start with the maps, and we'll have the total population of the county we divide it by the number of board supervisors if you leave at 17 then we do by 17 and then we start going through the map and picking all the blocks and the numbers are all in the blocks now those and blocks are census districts right census and blocks those are set but we can't move we those can't around. move those okay. around and we have to stay contiguous with with uh, each district anyway so That'll be the big thing. Can we Once split a census district or a census block? No, I don't think we can. Okay, so what we're going so to be if, doing if is. If you see one here that's got 30 and you only need 17, but you see another 16 over here, you're going to pull that one rather than the 30. Okay. Because so you want to be within, well, they say 3%, but um, a so lot of them we were even closer than that. We're going to be built using the census blocks as building blocks to create districts of a cert certain number of districts that all have basically the same population in them. Yes. And, and that's our only responsibility is to create the county board supervisory districts. We right. have no responsibility for anything else. No, but then when it goes to the municipalities, if they don't like the lines, Right now, you know, we have uh, three county board supervisors that have parts of the city of Arcadia. Arcadia, right. Maybe Arcadia won't like that. Maybe they'll say... We want one. We want, yeah, we want the city to be one. Well, 
I know that's going to be too many for a, uh, for one district uh, for for one district, and then ten years ago is when we kind of had that other thing where I don't like to get too political, but where um, the lines were actually school district lines. And that uh, line were were they in one? Oh. So, which on census blocks was very hard to find because the census blocks don't care about school districts. You know, it could be one block have half of one school and half another school and stuff like that. But, but at that time, it was kind of a little contentious, I think. I've heard talk of that. So is the basic idea we have um, X amount of people living in the county, and we just the first decision is we decide if you're going to just if you're going to split that population total, you're going to divide it by 17. And if you divide it by 17, that's going to give a number, mm -hmm. and that number has got to be we try to draw lines that put that amount of people in each of those um, areas. But the first the key decision is how many supervisors. Is that something that should probably be brought up before the full board at the next um, county board meeting? That part I can't remember if that happened before the census blocks were done. I think it was. It, it, it makes sense. The last one. Huh? We did it before the last one because we went from 21 to 17. No, that was two no, times ago. No, that was ago. two times ago. Two times ago? I hate yeah. to say it. I was here when it was three times ago, which was 30 years ago. But, uh, but I'm saying for this next, for our August meeting, should we probably bring that before the full board if we're going to change the number of supervisors? And that wouldn't be bad because I think the county board meeting yes, is before on the 16th. The, yes, so. So it would be before we get the information. It but I don't be, know how. It would be different than the two that I've been part of, or not that have not been part of, in which a committee was, was to, the committee that was appointed, created to do that, made that decision, and then recommended it to the county board. Um, and, I, and you've kind of had it that the exec finance is going to be that committee this time. Not to say that that and, isn't a good idea. And it is actually an ordinance, so I don't know how we could pass an ordinance saying this is the number when we don't have the, the, what the districts are made up of. So I think it was after. I think the committee decided that it was going to be 17 and then what, the blocks were all made up and you mean the committee 10 years ago this yep. Yeah. So. Yep. this committee hasn't made any kind of decision okay and it, was, it was an appointed committee as opposed to a committee of the board yeah. part of part of part of the finance was part of it then too but well, one thing I was going to say, the 17 board member committee, it works good for splitting up the committees because everyone's got at least three. And we start cutting that number down to 15 or 12 or whatever you do of 13. More committees. You're got. you going to have some people who are going to be on these four committees, five committees. You know, I think it works good right at 17 right now, the way, the way our county is set up. Well, I would, I, we're arguing the point. I would argue we don't need that many board members. We need an administrator. So the, in counties that have a county administrator, the administrator carries the weight of, mu uh, of many of those decisions, and the board members are fewer and the committees are smaller. So that would be the direction I'd like to see us go. Throwing that out for discussion. But that's going to be too short term for what we have right now. We're going to have to make that decision. For this timeline. Yeah, anyway. for this timeline, we can't uh, sh uh, get a commissioner or decide on a commissioner in that amount of time. No, but we could decide on fewer, fewer committee members, and that would push the county towards an administrator. I mean, nothing's going to happen. You, you know, it's like that building out there. It can go step by step by step. Nothing, you're not going to just drop it in place. So. Uh, but I, I, geez, that, I, that's, that's a reason to be at the board meeting if, if we're just going to come up at the next board meeting. How would I put that on the agenda? Just we haven't anything controversial for so long. Gosh. 
Well, at least but let all the county board members have some yeah. input on it. I almost thought the way you were talking, it probably should be decided that day. On the other hand, Paul, you had suggested that um, the decision about the uh, the number of districts and the makeup of the districts is required by statutes to be an ordinance that are that's passed by the whole board. Right. We could certainly get a sense of the room, right. and then the committee could take take that back. I, I agree with you. It would be anyway. best to have a sense of the room, mm -hmm. since eventually the decision is going to come back to the board. So, so not make a decision at the county board right. meeting, but right. come up with a consensus. Right. After the committee recommends it, yep. yes. <laughs> There's not going to be easels and big maps. I can get you one if you want. Just for me personally. Yeah. He I loves it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a it's teacher monkey. He, he likes to be up there, you know. Right. Dry, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, children, here is where we're going to put District 3. <laughs> I, okay. I think he loves uh, it. Yeah. Room on numeral one. Yeah, you should see him during the budget meetings. He, he, he's the first to grab the markers and go up to the board. <laughs> Okay, so probably when it comes time to setting meeting dates, we'll set a date for that meeting then? Or do we want to do it now? Probably should do it today. Yeah, but I meant start. later on in the agenda. So or? The, let me make sure I'm getting a straight dog. You're going to turn your mic on, Paul. Oops. Why don't we put You're it going on, to bring it, it to the county board for discussion. For discussion only. And right. consensus. Can I do that? Right. Discussion and. Con okay. A discussion recommendation and, or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then the committee will go from there. Yep, that sounds do, okay. Do we, so, so we've got. We have the, the, the board make a recommendation to the exec finance committee as to the number of uh, supervisory, supervisory, supervisory districts. districts. And then, we, then, the, then the committee has something to work with instead of guessing at it. Essentially, the board could essentially refer to the exec finance committee with a number in mind right. and have them take a look at it come back right. with a recommendation. Right. Okay. What's what's to prevent us from making a uh, uh, setting a date for our first meeting to look at this? Obviously, we're crunched. Paul has a lot of responsibility in terms of making sure the public notice, the public hearing notices are published, um, and we certainly have only until the fifteenth um, to come up with a tentative plan. So, you know, we're looking at three weeks. I let, let's shoot for the 23rd or the 24th um, for a meeting date so we can get started. Should we pick a date now? Is that what you're recommending? Yeah. I don't, I can't see the calendar, and that's a July uh, calendar. 23rd oh, is a Monday. John, can you change that well, calendar? Well, we already have an August calendar, but I will take it out, get it out here and take a look at it. I don't know if anybody else has 23rd is a Monday. I've I know, but as far as other other committee other committee dates are already set for August, so right. we don't want to just plunk in a date. Was, um, Properties see. on the 26th now. Yeah, to the 23rd, George brought that, that up as his blank at this point. The what? The 23rd is blank at this point. Will we have it at midnight on the 23rd, or is it going to roll in that, at that 3 o'clock in the Good afternoon? Question. I don't, I'm not well, to 24th is also blank if you want to eliminate that possible conflict. Let's do it. Let's just set 24th? it for the 24th. 24th? Is this meeting usually long or? It can be as long as you make it. Yep. Yeah, it all depends, Chuck. Yeah. In the past, you remember? We had many. <laughs> I wasn't involved. No, it was her predecessor, Martin. Mark. Martin um, <coughs> was on it. We met probably. I bet you we met half a dozen times. There was a lot going you on get 10 going, years ago. When you, when you get going, and, and nothing against you, but the way that Not his district is, where it goes from the Eau Claire County line all the way to the town of Preston, is kind of a... Yeah, I think I'm going to extend it all the way across He's the a big just, L. Right. <laughs> and mine goes from the town of Preston to the city of Galesville like 95 all the way down to the outskirts. Of so I mean that some of those probably could be doctored or whatever. Well, I mean, to, I, I, I mean, remember telling quite a few people that you, you look at the county, the map of the county uh, supervisory districts, I said, well, this is obviously gerrymandered. 
it's, it's my, the G District 12 is the prime example because it, it is, you, you know, it because was. It, was, it was, it's obvious yeah. because of the way, the way it runs. It is a big L taking in uh, a big swath on the western side of the county and then going directly east and going all, it's ridiculous. And other ones are, you know, they, they follow like Paul's, follow school district lines, follow lots of, uh, um, there are lots of those lines have been drawn for reasons that are suspicious. I guess is what I was suspicious. So, well, mine is that little tail that gets me with the city of Independence. Yeah, but that's okay because down into Arcadia is the Independent School District. Yeah, it, you know, it's, so yeah. that's the one, and Chuck's is the one that goes to the Independent School Real District. Real weird line. But if you too. don't know where the district is. Because that so doesn't show on the, a the short answer is it, it depends on whether we wanted to to make it something we, we want or just something logical, you know that would be just. So it would be hard to answer how long this is going yeah. to take. So probably just, the first one was preliminary would probably just a couple hours, yeah. and okay. then so you get tell your administrator going you're going to be busy. Um, what was I going to say? Um, well, and it all depends on the population shift in the county too. If for that change has taken place, if much at all. Well, I do know because 10 years ago, village of Tremplo was only like about 1,100. Now it's over 1,500. So that's our biggest area that's that's growing. You well, know, so that okay, that yeah. district will start changing things that move from there. Then you got to decide if you're going to start in the north or in the south. Uh, 10 years ago, we started in the south 20 years ago we started in the north it's time to start in the center and move out oh <laughs> you got to start somewhere anyway yeah. decide where you're going to start and okay so should we set the 24th, 24th. nine o'clock nine o'clock okay so this would be a, a meeting of the exact finance committee right. to consider the redistricting with yeah. paul and ann present And we'll sit at the computer. Yes. <laughs> yes. So when we have it on that screen, it'll be kind of. Okay. Okay, then we'll go from this. there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else about our um, uh, redistricting? Okay. Did I Mr. Semmingson? Yeah, you got it. I got it. Okay, you do, need <coughs> do Tim's first. Okay. okay. Tim isn't here. I well, know, but we can talk about it. Oh, that committee. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk about it. If, you know, we were. I think everybody was there except you. You and John were. No, John was in the meeting. So John was. So you're the only one who needs to be filled in. So, what's the, what's this about? Well, are we are we on? Yeah, the, go the go. Item? Yeah, we're on item. Um, from what I understood from D. Tim Robertson, but I don't remember the amount of money he was asking. It was fifty something thousand. Uh, 15,000. Oh, that isn't that bad. Are you sure it's that low? It was money to replace out of date servers and to avoid the problem we had a couple of weeks ago with uh, the service crashing, which I don't think anybody in the board is going to have trouble approving. Yeah. The, the question I have is uh, how does this relate to the money we approved? Um, Month and a half ago, at the 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 doc has, your doc can do it. You fool me. County board meeting related to um, uh, uh, oh, yeah, here's the resolution retrieving. <coughs> I, th I think there was a, a fifty some thousand dollars to, to buy um, um, services to retrieve information in the case of a crash of um, you know, unsupported software which of course then happened before we had the chance to actually sign the contract um, so this is this is actually to re replace the servers that hold that information I'll I'll Doc, you want to read that well you want me to read it or you yeah go sure? ahead I, I don't know if I have mine here or George could just read it too no it, it needs to be read in order before we okay. make a yeah. motion yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Here, I I transfer from the unassigned general fund to IT for HP yeah. server out of warranty support. Whereas the Tremplo County Information Technology staff can no longer secure and support out of warranty servers running production loads. And 
whereas in 2021 and 2022, we have nine production servers that are no longer supported. Actually, we will have no uh, nine production servers that are no longer supported by the manufacturer. And whereas the security components identified in the 2020 security evaluation in CAPS now requires that all production servers are covered under a support agreement for firmware and patches. And whereas the security evaluation results were not available prior to the completion of the 2021 budget. And whereas the estimated cost to secure a third party support contract, as we're paying for here, third party support contract to cover the expected production life of our equipment from August 1, 2021 through July 30th, 30, 31, 2023 for the enhancement of the county security status is $15,762.32. And whereas the purchase of these services will greatly assist in allowing existing in-house staff <clears throat> to mitigate security issues, protect county data, and prevent a loss of critical services. Now be it resolved that the Trimble County Board of Supervisors approves the transfer of $15,762.32 from the unassigned general fund to account 101.51450.210 for the purpose of securing a third party support contract to assist in improving the county's technology security situation. Already approved by the property committee. I'll move for approval. Second. Okay, a motion and a second. Since you have your questions answered, we all had it explained to us yeah, the property. Yeah, I, it's, I, I get it. I get it. And he wanted at least get to get through till the building is till the new right. building is up. Then we can look at the different means for this. I think and we had that presentation at the Yeah, I think board Tim sort of confused everything. He made that impassioned plea for more money mm -hmm. before the the, the, the the meltdown two weeks Basically, ago. Basically, yeah. He was, he was really anticipating way in advance, I believe. And then this happened, so this is just to solve the problem for the time being, next couple, you know, a couple of years. That's oh. how I get it anyway. Okay, does anybody else have any questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor of issuing the supporting funds for the out of dates out of warranty out of warranty server uh, signify by saying aye. Aye, aye aye oppose same sign okay yeah, so we'll have to have that yeah. sent around and signed yeah, okay now board. sheriff Simingson. presenting sheriff presenting huh? we went from d to c uh yep we did <laughs> You got a problem with that? Yeah, we're going back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Paul went up to get a copy of the um, wording of the resolution that the Law Enforcement Committee passed uh, last week, or maybe two weeks ago now. Um, what happened was is uh, we did not get that um, written in proper format because of the server issues that IT was explaining. We could not get a proper um, resolution, but I had all the whereas as and the be it resolved in, in form for the um, law enforcement committee and uh, they passed it and that will be signed by them at the county board meeting their signatures we didn't have it for them that meeting so Paul went to get a copy of of that wording anyway even though we don't have the resolution in proper format yet but um, without I don't have the exact dollars amount um, but we're um, I'm referring to a, uh, a little bit over twenty six thousand dollars and last year during the budget budget cycle um, my vehicle budget line item was reduced by 26,000 and some odd dollars um, to um, help the county balance their budget and then um, I wasn't going to need it until more than halfway through this year anyway uh, it was decided at that time that that would be best and that I would come back to for to uh, committee for resolution to get that back into my budget to make the purchases so um, this year I have found that um, not only have the Ford Explorers gone up by $3,500, they, they did um, last year, um, but this year now the Durango that was my solution has also gone up over $3,000. Um, that I'm not asking for any more money though. Um, I've had pretty good success in selling my used vehicles versus trading them, so it still helps me um, absorb those, but I still need the, the full hundred and forty thousand dollars to be able to, to continue my vehicle uh, replacement as I have been so um, 
basically that's in a nutshell um i just to give you an update until uh until paul gets back i, I can't order the 2022s yet and they quit taking orders on the 2021s and once i am able to order the 2022s they're telling me that it's going to be up to six months lead time to get them so i did find on, on down at pishke motors in west salem he has four squad car package vehicles on a lot and he's done that before down there they have them on a lot um, in case somebody smashes one up or they need one in an emergency um, they happen to have four of them on a lot down there right now I'm replacing three of them in mine so I, I will be purchasing those so I don't have to have wait that six months anyway I, I did find um, no nope, those are the Durangos yep yep so the 2021s? they are 2021s yep yep so the 2022s go into production in December, I'm told, by uh, my, my normal dealer down in Arcadia there, and we can't even order them yet. So um, it's really up in the air um, what's going to happen for 2022 yet. But uh, I was lucky to be able to find these um, available, and uh, um, I guess I'm just uh, that those that'll go to audit this week for for me to be able to get the check for or next week I think it is to get the check for those those three. So. Um, but I do have one more vehicle that I ha have to replace yet this year, so that's that's what makes it crucial to get this extra back into my budget again. So, so I guess just stand still till we'll just wait till Paul gets here. Yeah. So I do have the electronic version of the resolution right here. Oh, here he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> well, speak of the devil. Okay. And I suppose this should be read then. Yeah. Okay. And law enforcement already met. Yes. Okay, here's the resolution we are now discussing. Transfer from unassigned general fund to sheriff's office vehicle fund. Whereas the Trumple County Sheriff's Office maintains a fleet of vehicles to be used to provide law enforcement services to Trumple County. And whereas the Trumple County Sheriff's Office has established a non-lapsing fund account number 52106 for annual Sheriff's Office vehicle replacement. And whereas the Sheriff's Office vehicle fund account was reduced to $113,698 in the 2021 budget from $140,000 so as to avoid the need to increase the county tax levy. Whereas the cost of next year's model for the police vehicles commonly used in law enforcement has increased $3,500, and whereas the original budget amount requested $140,000 is consistent with the 2020 budgeted amount. Now be it resolved that the Trumple County Board of Supervisors approves the transfer of $26,302 from the unassigned general fund into account 101.5. 521 uh, vehicle budget for the sheriff's office use in vehicle replacement and you said this has been passed by the law enforcement correct okay, so now the money we denied you at budget time now you're gonna have to get it back yep I'm okay. not scared we, we, we mentioned <laughs> that anyway that yeah that would happen so. yeah. yeah I'll move to approve move to approve second and we have a second <laughs> okay any further discussion then? Hearing none, all those in favor of transferring the fund signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> okay, thank you. And we can pass her down the row then. Okay, that should take care of that. Auto warranty support restricting we've done uh, the down to letter F discussion of action or discussion slash action county board rules who's gonna lead the discussion in that mr. Rick, <laughs> mr. Rick. yeah Rick you ha I don't have the copy that you provided us last week well copy I, it, I did I did read the I did read them last mm -hmm. time and I think I mentioned to you the one mistake that I saw was um, land records had gotten from exec finance to 
Oh no, from uh, Depart uh, Environment Land, land Use to Land to, to whatever this committee is. Um, <laughs> but um, you neglected to put in the transfer of IT from exec finance to property. Okay. All right. So that that would be the only change that I would recommend from the the list that, or the copy that you had sent last time. Okay. Um, Tim, I can print off a copy. Does anybody else want a copy? I don't either? think you, we don't. I, I, the only bone I had to chew on was that up the business about the virtual meetings. Attend, mm -hmm. Supervisor attends at the virtual meetings. Mm -hmm. Do you still have, can you find that section in yep. your electronic copy? I can. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I was, I, I, it was my opinion that the uh, way you should allow no attendance at, um, at uh, you should be here in person. Yeah, that section reads, uh, remote virtual meeting attendance of board members is allowed. However, a board member uh, may not attend more than three meetings remotely slash virtually in a calendar year without approval from the chair. That, that was the language I was, that was put in there. Right. Um, yeah. <coughs> and, then, and then number three was just an arbitrary number um, that, I, that I had thrown in there. So, so, so what, I, what's, your, what's the beef? I'm it's not a beef. It's, it's the, in the past, our practice has always been that uh, you should, so it's not negative. Um, it, your supervisors were required to attend in person every every meeting. If they did not attend, they needed to provide an excuse, or they should provide an excuse, and they would not be paid. They did not have a vote. So I would simply like to continue that. This wording makes it possible for supervisors to attend virtually and vote virtually and uh, be paid for uh, remote attendance at a meeting I, mean, I disagree with that so that's essentially where I'm at so I would re just simply remove the language that Rick had that Rick put in there Consi considering what's happened um, with all of us being remote at, at some point or another in the last year because of the, the um, public health emergency should there be any in your uh, in your thinking should there be any um, uh, provision made for um, in the case of a public health emergency or something like that? Well, there was nothing made previous. I mean, we simply adapted. We, we, we all agreed to adapt to the coronavirus pandemic by allowing virtual attendance. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as we can tell now, there is no the emergency is over. And I th think we just need to return to the original state of affairs. So it would simply be leave, uh, take that language out. And I don't know if you want to say some, put something in there about uh, exceptions can be made on the basis of um, a medical emergency or something like that. I think we've always, actually we've always done that in the past also. I think one time Beth attended, she was on vacation in Arizona or something, and I think she attended virtually. Several times, Beth. Several times. She does that every year. Oh, one. Well. Mm -hmm. Couple months. So I, I know this will be contentious also, but um, I, I do think we need to set the example for the rest of the county by being present at meetings. And um, I, if, this, if the supervisors aren't going to do it, then why should anybody else come to work? So if you, if you, I'd like to simply remove that language. And if you want to insert something that uh, allows for a medical <coughs> emergency or a public health crisis or something like that, I'd leave that up to you. If you want to create that, create that language. Chuck, can I can I go ahead? Respond. I, I'm not arguing with you because I agree with you, but I'm doing I'm doing the I'm trying to put myself in in the place of our current reality, or I'm trying to immerse myself in the mindset of our current reality, where it becomes almost second nature to assume that virtual presence is the same as physical presence, and. And I would be I would be happy for this board to I mean to agree with you for this committee and this board to to put a, a premium on physical presence as opposed to virtual presence. Um, there are those who don't see what the big what's the diff, you know. Um, and I'm saying that's it's very possible a generational thing. That's I'm trying to bring a different perspective, even though I agree with you. Well, if we're going to vote on the, the <coughs> proposed county board rules, my, my motion would be to remove that language. I would second that. And then, and then we'll have to go from there. 
Okay. So that would be to remove the sentences that I, you probably have mm -hmm. to read them again. The sentences sure. that uh, permit any virtual attendance and mm -hmm. supervise that would be at uh, full full board meetings or com or committee meetings. Mm -hmm. This is the one, right, with all the yellow and green. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, <clears throat> well, this makes it easier then. The um it, in last time you guys had talked about making this applicable to county or um, committees and board meetings. Um, so there's that preamble that's going to be added I didn't do it today because I know there was going to be some further discussion about some further changes potential changes so um, so whether you want to vote on them today or I can make the changes was discussed and bring it back again I'll leave it up to the committee as to how you want to do that there were some ones highlighted in green those the ones in green were the ones where I didn't know if we still needed them in the rules and so I don't know if there's any discussion to be had on that um, the only thing I want to clarify, Tim, you had mentioned something about maybe putting something in there about in a, an extenuating circumstance it can be done. Do you want that or just have it removed completely? The second would, would like extenuating circumstance, but I'm, I, I'm also um, reminded that um, in the case of a lack of a quorum, um, um, a remote, I, I believe we've had John call in or at, uh, at times um, well basically calling in in order to to meet a quorum so that business can be done that's again Tim your point being that the um, the county board rules this committee the county board is is saying presence is important if you're going to be on a committee you're, you're going to be there you make make time to be there and so forth but um, um, quorum sometimes becomes an issue um, whether it's convenience or illness or or whatever distance um, folks can't make the meeting or won't make the meeting here so, uh, can I I can make a suggestion sure okay. I've got the text so this would not change um, the, the the highlighted text now says remote virtual meeting attendance of board members is allowed so I would change that to is not allowed. I would insert the word not, but then there's a however. However, a board member may, let's see, uh, may attend virtually under extenuating circumstances with approval from the chair. How's that? That sounds good. So we have a, then we have a positive statement. We have the chair making a decision right. about, yes, this merits yes or not yes or no this your, your your whatever your problem is this it merits that but you're not just the same chair of the board you're the same chair of the committee no um well this doesn't specify whether it's committee or um, um whether it's chair of the committee or chair chairman of the board i think this assumes county board this is assumes county board Right. It, it does, and um, we're going to add a preamble that does make this all applicable to committee meetings. That, as that well. would that mm -hmm. would solve the problem. We added that in before, right? Correct. We added it, in the committee meeting. Correct. Um, right. It's not it's not on the version that you have because that was something right. that was discussed at the last one. We must so, have yeah. talked about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. So, so you're saying yeah. a committee chair could for committee meetings, for committee, uh, committee chair could for that them committee for yeah, virtual. Sure so if it just says chair, it doesn't have to be board right. chair or committee chair. Right. Right. Just and it would chair. be under extenuating, you said extenuating circumstances, is that right, Tim? Yes. Yes, okay. So I, I get, I'm gonna read, help me clarify, this was, I'm gonna read it again to clarify it for myself. Remote virtual meeting attendance of board members is not allowed. However, a board member may attend a board meeting or committee meeting remotely or virtually with permo with permission from the chair um, under extenuating circumstances yeah, you had put the, the phrase under extenuating, extenuating circumstances, circumstances before okay but the either way Rick, uh, Rick, Rick makes, makes it that, sound you, yep. makes mm -hmm. it sound smart yep. right there. Mm -hmm. it, would you be okay if I if we started that sentence with um, in-person attendance is required yes except for those circumstances would yep. you be okay with that I yeah, I would be okay. Right. I just thought putting it putting it an improvement. And, and there's your be. there's your positive statement. There's a positive statement. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You're eliminating the three meeting remotely. Right. Correct. Yep. Just removing that completely. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to vote on it today if he wants to do all. We're knocking change. it out. Mm -hmm. We're good. We're going to get this. Duke it out. <laughs> Duking it out. Okay. Yep. You just I can, have to I'll have make it that. in place before the end of the year. Is the way the the rules say. And then they would take effect. After our next election, yes, April. Any of board rules would be 
could not be enforced until the new board is in yep. is in session. Correct. I also last month I brought up the thing about the cell phones, but I'll re I'll re uh, retract that or not to retract. I think it says be sure cell phones are turned off or silent during any meeting. Correct. Yep. And if that is enforced, that would be sufficient. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we any other. Th so we're not going to act on it. We're just giving you guidance right now yet. And that's up to you. I, well, some, you some guidance is the green highlighted language as to whether or not you want to keep that in there or not. I know we talked a little bit about it last time. There were just items in there that I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know where they came from or why they're in there. So I just. Mm -hmm. There is a motion, though. Yes. How would be your pleasure? I did have one other item as well too. Under the committees section, um, the Trumple County Healthcare Center Board Committee um, is not listed as a standing committee of the board. I didn't know if that was intentional or not intentional. I, I thought it was. Oh, I didn't see it in there. Can, can I, I don't even second? know where to look. I know it's in a 22. separate ordinance, but I didn't. It's not listed under the board rules. <clears throat> and those members are all elected. And appointed. Appointed, yeah. Appointed by the chair. But that's the same thing with some other committees, too. Correct. Exactly. That's the only committee you don't see the per diem from. What's that? You don't see the per diem from it. You're right. It's it's a right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a standing committee. Well, that's what I thought, and that's you why I saw pay that pay in my. Right I just thought I'd bring it up and see. Off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, we have, a ordin have an ordinance that addresses the makeup of that particular committee, um, but it's not in the board rules. Well, and like John was just talking to me about, is they're not paid out of the county budget. We get money right from the health care center for that. And they're well, we've got other committees like that. And their per diem is different than our committee per diem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aren't you paid the same amount as what the rest of the board? No. Sure. no. It's not 50 and 100? Is it 100 and 200? 70. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that part. We have some catching up to do. <laughs> <laughs> bring that up next time. You guys and got some catching up to do. <laughs> and that's, well, we only have the one committee, so that, you know, so it's just, it's always $70 for us. Well, the pay isn't in the ordinance anyway. No, they're not. usually record committee meeting like hour or an hour and a half. Yeah, they're, they're oh, different. Then it's yeah. the other way around. They're only meeting over hour and a half. So and if you're talking about changing your, your pays, you got to do that before December 1st for the next elected. I'm not going to educate that. So, I Mr. Just, Chair, we have we have a motion to uh, advise Corp Council to change the uh, uh, the wording the, the wording the on meeting attendance uh, related to um, virtual meetings. Yeah. Okay. Is there any further discussion then? All those in favor of that, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Anything else you need guidance on, Rick? I don't think so. I think I'll make those changes that we've talked about now and then bring it one bring more time in front of the... And then plan mm -hmm. on the... One more time. <coughs> plan on approval then. Yep, I actually I put it in there. <laughs> so, nope, sounds good. I'll get okay, that up. Okay, was there anything else within the uh, uh, board rules? And just so I'm clear, so we don't need to add the Trumbull County Health Care Center Committee Board, whatever, in under there? Is that what we're saying? I thought it was a standing committee. I, I guess it, I don't know what got missed. I didn't even think about it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I thought okay. it was in here. That's okay. Well, we'll we'll do this for the moment. Um, people can think about it before next time. I won't mm -hmm. add it at the moment, but if people want it in there, it's a very yeah. simple process. To what do, what so. is the question again? Whether the health care committee should be listed as a separate committee or listed as a board committee? Should be listed as a standing committee of the county board. It's right it now it's not in there at all. It's, it's not, not it in just there right out there? I mean, the, the, yeah. There is an ordinance that addresses it, but there's not a county board rule on it. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And the ordinance so addresses the composition of the committee, but not necessarily the job duties and responsibilities like the rest of them. Oh, we darn. So I guess I learned something. I guess we should be consistent with the ordinance. 
we don't want to go back and change the order. Mm -hmm. So we feeling that it should be added there? Well, whatever, we, we should be consistent with whatever the ordinance says. Rick has the ordinance. So if, if it's listed as a standing committee of the board, then we should have it in the county board rules as a standing committee of the board. And the health, the board, all the approvals come to the county board before a new member is added. That's true. And the election are the ones from county board are. <coughs> yep, and they're approved by the full board. Mm -hmm. right. Is there going to be a problem then with the per diem then? Since it is. Per diem isn't addressed in correct. here. Oh, it's not, not addressed. Not. Okay. Yeah, that's separate. Mm -hmm. So we should be okay with it that. Should be okay there. I'll, um, I'll, I'll put in there and I'll highlight it like I did with the rest of them so that way everybody knows what the addition is and we can discuss it next time okay. as to what it is. But I'll use the ordinance as the guide. Okay, anything else on the board rules? Okay, moving. Chuck, before we move on, ahead, um, I think. Oh, I got to get one more signature. One, did you, I, this, just if anybody's on law, can, can sign right now. <coughs> we signed this. Because okay. you guys yeah. already met on it. I was just going to catch the rest of them at the county board meeting. I, I, right, I just wanted to bring this up before we moved on to another item. So that we're not passing this around and nobody knows what we're doing. No, yeah, this way. Side, so. this Which way? way? This way? Yeah. Okay. Okay, should we be moving on then? Are we ready to go then? Okay, our next one then would be the ARP funds. And I gave you a little packet. I guess it's not little, it's kind no, of No, it's thick. not. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, we were in on, uh, John, I think you were in on it too, the, uh, the webinar from the, the, the gentleman from Von Briesen, what's his name? Andy? Nope, nope. Was it Jake, Andy? Jacob or something? Oh, there was a Jake. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, very knowledgeable and, and we found out he is going around to counties and giving presentations about this because when he did the webinar the day before he was in Adams County and so I think I mentioned it to John that maybe we could have him come to our county board meeting and just give his presentation yeah, this too. is enormous uh, it's like <laughs> absorbing a book right right and that's one thing he kept saying don't rush into anything don't I mean there's plenty of years to to decide on what to do with it and and uh, got a lot of people salivating over this money <laughs> <laughs> well we've got one department that wants it all so we yeah, don't have to yeah, worry right about away, them that's right <laughs> and another one that wants at least half of it and uh, and now some of these others piecing so we probably are gonna have to have at least five times as much to cover it <laughs> <laughs> Well, that 200,000 you mentioned this morning, that covers everybody, doesn't it? Put it back in. So yeah, well, with the treasurer's office, that's a lost income. Finally, finally, we've got one. I like that one. I'll so. for that. <laughs> and you could designate it for three years, I suppose. Whatever but the loss was. I, I think, Mr. Chair, so I, it's, I think we're... we're we're sort of missing the larger point here, which is it's this is money that's supposed to be it's targeted at, at a need, okay, either a need created by COVID or a need create that has existed for a long time that we haven't had funding to address. And th this is in the in your mailboxes. It's a much smaller um, and more easily digestible list of eligible uses. And the headings, I think, are are telling responding to public health emergency, addressing negative economic impacts, serving the hardest hit, and improving access to infrastructure. And it, it goes from everything from vaccinations to early learning services, housing vouchers, drinking and wastewater infrastructure, um, premium pay for essential workers, public health resources. And um, following up on Rob's presentation this morning, it would it would behoove us, I think, to act now um, to determine how it is th the decisions are going to be made and who's going to be part of those decisions. There is a significant um, piece here related to um, uh, uh, housing and uh, 
mental health issues as well as educational disparities and in that in that case it would help us it, I, I think if we asked sectors of our polity to join us in the discussion the education sector the the, the hospitals and and um, uh, public health um, the, the human services related especially to um, mental illness the sheriff's department um, I'd also as well as any sort of advocates for um, uh, broadband and so forth TCC for instance somebody who knows something about that so you're um, basically saying what Rob was talking about I'm, during I'm, public I'm comment. jumping on we Rob may not realize what they lost unless we hear it from them <laughs> but it isn't just about loss no it's it's I mean there's yeah. the, there's the Moving loss forward. part of it but also catching up in a sense with the the sort of um, uh, well they're generally calling it infrastructure but anything that we haven't been able to address because we've we haven't had the resources to do it and now we have the resources um, I'm not sure yet. I don't know you know I, I don't know how it is to to gather the information related to where the needs are uh, the, the talk today and for the last couple of weeks has to do with the ending the moratorium on evictions um, uh, in terms of timeliness this is money that could be used to assist in housing some counties I have heard on national news some counties some municipal cities some states even are taking taking money and and trying to find a way to get it to people so they can stay in their houses we have I personally this the committee doesn't know what the level of that need is in this county there are departments and um, services within this service providers within this county who do know we should at, we should at, use them use their expertise in the decision making process um, so I'm going to I'm going to request right now um, and whether or not a motion is in, is is in order I guess Paul or Rick could could help me on that um, that a um, that a committee be formed um, that a discussion at least be had as to who might sit on a committee related to um, dispersal of these funds and I and I'm recommending the sectors for who the sectors of our our community that are eligible for these funds um, with law enforcement human services education health department. health um, and for that matter um, uh, technology and um, what does Rob represent economic development George are you are you uh, of course I'd, I'd, I'd uh, uh, be happy to make the motion if we understand one another are okay. you suggesting the formation of a committee uh, similar to the county administrator committee of 16 or 18 months ago that would be a group of people who are appointed to study the situation and make a recommendation to the board or to this committee about how to because what I'm looking for is, is a structure someone to actually structure something make if this is the list of potential uses well prioritize these mm -hmm. well that would be, it would take a committee and I'm not going to do that so um, uh, if, if you want to have the chair appoint a committee and uh, to study the situation and make a recommendation again in a, similar to the county administrator committee I'd be happy to make that motion the motion to uh, create the committee I, that would be great I think the just just to I'm not going to be on it by the way just to um, <laughs> um, uh, to illustrate your point it, it may be impossible for us to do anything about um, uh, currently un unserved or underserved population related to broadband my, my understanding is that the state of Wisconsin prohibits municipality counties from funding broadband um, so as much of a, a need as there is I'm not sure we could find a way to to use that money to get to broadband on the other hand we've heard from the sheriff and from um, uh, the human services director that our, me our mental health substance abuse crisis intervention is is a really big need in this county and the sheriff at the last county board meeting was saying 
there's there's something that the federal government and the state needs to do and there are things that the state and the and local governments need to do related to this find out what those are and where, where funding might be needed so um, just just to make your point you know there are so, some of these eligible areas are things we can't do anything about and there are others that we can well that would be the committees that would be the exactly grist for the mill for that committee so exactly. I'll, if we're I'll make the motion to um, ask the chair to appoint a study committee to um, make recommendations for the uh, disbursement of the ARPA funds I'll second that okay any okay we have motion and a second yeah I'll second that I okay we have I think I George did, George did all oh, oh, so we have a second okay any further discussion then I would just if the chair over there is the one we're referring to I, I would I would point out the the areas in here and involve at least uh, um, someone from the education community outside of the county government to to be part of that How would you, you thinking? half a dozen seven something like that I don't think we want to get it too big either no, no. that's why I'm saying yeah. five about that seven. size five six seven okay any further discussion then just for clarification if this committee is requesting that this committee be appointed do you want to give guidance to the chair as to what members might be appropriate not, well, not necessarily specific individuals necessarily but maybe <coughs> specific areas or well, before positions. once once we pass it I'm gonna go around and ask oh, you okay? Are you okay? okay. <laughs> All right. sure. mm -hmm. any other discussion then for me committee for disbursements of these funds Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, now, <laughs> I definitely think Paul needs to be on it because there are some guidelines and Rick, because we don't know the guidelines, because you specifically have some guidelines, some do's and don'ts. Can I, can I recommend that Paul and Rick act as not members of the committee, but as resources for the committee? I was going to say for myself, anyhow, I would like to I, be the, the legal counsel for the county, so I could help advise them. But not on not the committee, not vote on matters. And okay. Okay. Well, same with me. Yeah. And Chuck, as I was saying, you know, human services, law enforcement, public health, education, someone from the education sector, um, uh, economic development. But do they need to be on the committee, or are those people that are going to come I, to I the committee? I think they need to be on the committee because they know where the needs are, um, and they and and they know where to to find the the, the resource, or they they need they know where the needs are. That's that's what I'm saying. Paul wants to and say. I, I just wanted to say, you should really decide what the makeup is because from what I'm hearing, it's going to all be county board members, but it'll be a member from. The committees that you're talking. I was thinking staff, See, that's, staff that's, that's or what department I was head, not necessarily county. There should be a county board member or two, but um, certainly um, the, it's the people with. Like Tim said, we don't know this. Like I said, I, I didn't don't. say that. Here. I <laughs> said <laughs> you agree. Um, and I guess the way I heard it coming was that it would be a member from each of those committees. No, but I, now it's I, more. I, I think the professionals need to be determining where the needs are because they already know. But if they're going to be asking for funds, their votes are not going to be impartial. They're well, going to vote for the money they want. Well, they're recommendations. Okay. And we we always assume, especially in right, right. And you, yeah. it, if it becomes the obvious, it's the last word. No matter yeah. what. It's like, and and definitely not highway. Nobody from highway. <laughs> oh, but, but they want it all. <laughs> Will, of course. will per diems be allowed for no, these meetings? Highway is not even part of it. The only way they can get it is the lost revenues. Right. Right. Those can go to highway. That's the only way they can get it. Okay, I was then Rick had a question. Will this meeting be subject to per diem? Per diem and expenses? Okay. Um, I was it, thinking only the county board members that are on. Yeah. The rest would be employees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Employees, okay. Yeah. All right. County board members and employees? No, no, no. The employ just the county board members. Okay. Because the employees. How many board, county board members are we looking at? Uh, John and George three would sit down and figure it out. 
a school administrator somewhere? Or yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Usually Did we've had three, like the health care has three and several others. We have, um, well, it's, it's school registration time. So because I'm basically in three school districts, we get Arcadia, Etric, GET, and, and Blair. And they're all dealing with um, their uh, added programming in order to, to deal with the needs of their community. Um, uh, Blair is actually setting up a child care center. Um, um, yeah, GET has an after school club, they call it. Um, everybody's getting free meals that's federal at this point until the end of the emergency um, they're taking on more expenses to make sure everybody has the, the materials they need that so um, there are they're obviously very sensitive and there's continued outreach to the, uh, the underserved I guess is the term that's used but um, folks with um, there's actually outreach to homeless people if you're homeless and you need help let us know so that the school district has um, a, a lot of resources but they also have a lot of needs what's, what's the name of this committee the Bob Smith committee <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what do you want to call it <laughs> and just because we put it on our website typically and with the agendas and that kind of stuff just to be AR, ARPA study committee yeah Or disbursement, ARP ARP study study disbursement okay. committee. No, no, well, not, no. It's just the study committee. So okay. the study committee. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? John, why don't we sit down and talk about it? Yeah. Okay. So we voted on. We're going to. So five to seven people. Mm -hmm. Do we agree on three board members? Two. Two, should two should be, should be plenty. Be yeah. <coughs> and when should that committee begin? Yesterday. Did you say yesterday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I suppose as soon as the appointments can happen, I imagine. It would mm -hmm. be the county board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll put it on the agenda for the county Pretty board meeting, the appointments, and then it'll be meet after. They, right. Then that committee can get together and set a meeting date after that. that sounds good. Okay. I'll, I'll let Paul know to put it on the I agenda. So. This is our, you know, kind of earlier we were talking about this, our stuff, cold off. This really doesn't have to be rushed into No. Yet. No. no. Yeah, no. Years we don't even have money, half so. the money yet. Mm -hmm. so. right. Yeah. Unless... Un uh, there's an, a, a need identified. I again, um, I have no idea how many people are going to be um, displaced by eviction in in Trempeleau County, or if there's any resources. Apparently, there are state and federal resources available. It's just a matter of filling out the forms and getting the um, Less than getting 10 the resources. Of the federal funds that were given to the states for the rental. I'm going to run a restroom. Really? Yeah. I mean, the case has still got the funds. That's what I, yeah, that's what I heard, too, is that they're... They're, they're going to vote today, I think, or they're going to pass something today to cover the victims. They're, oh, it's they are going to do it. Okay. But Pelosi announced this morning that they were going to do something today. So that's not going to happen for a while. Yeah. Well, good. Well, it, like I say, um, the committee will figure it out. Yeah. I think well, we've already passed the resolution, but yeah. this keeps coming up. You know, Rob was here. You you mentioned it twice. We, we we should at least take some action to study the situation instead of just waiting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, so okay. So we're studying it. You right. guys figure out. You know, we can take it from here. But we're making some movement on it. I would like to hold off until at least uh, September meeting numbers. To, to appoint you to, mean to yeah. uh, okay so you want to wait till september i would think so okay because we could have some things happening in there okay all right well so that gives me a little more time i i wasn't really going to have time today to visit with you but maybe yeah. wednesday if you're around or sometime between now and whenever yeah.
Apparently we did. Chuck had to come out and appoint the members of this committee. It's the RPA Select Board. Come on, I'm going to take your Appoint the members of this committee. And it's the ARPA Study Committee. But that won't, but he wants to wait till September. Yeah, I just told him September meeting that he would have a meeting. What is the date? 20-something. I'm going to head in that way. Because it's different this time. 20th. We just don't jump up and scamper around the way we used to. <laughs> and Paul, I'm sorry, what did you say about this resolution? Did you do that one already? Uh, no. Hmm. Oh, no. Okay. That's what. What did you do with the warning? Correct, yes. Okay, we all set then with mm -hmm. the funds, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make those appointments. And who are some recommendations then? No, I'm making no, the you're, 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 Okay, you're okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Sounds yep. good. Okay. Anything else then? Okay. The only other thing is that's something to do. Um, that would be a committee's job to read and digest. Yes. Oh, I, okay. I, I, you know, I, I have to got it. Um, I don't think every, I don't especially want to read and try to digest it if it's if there's not going to be any point in me knowing all that information. So, oh, here's a good question: How do I know if a water sewer or broadband project is an eligible user? <laughs> well, another one in there is about you can make loans. Well, then when they're paid back, what do you do with the money? What do you do? With loan the money it again. Was loaned? Uh, but I don't know how. the arbitrage thing? I mean, we have to law yeah. against that. Th there's that. Um, do you want me to have that guy see if he can come to the August County Board meeting and do his presentation? Right now, we only have about three resolutions, so it's not a I not a know, big feel, agenda. Wait, wait until there's a wait until that uh, yeah. committee and then see have the committee see if that guy like right, got, it. got it. Got it. Bring it to okay. the committee's attention. Okay. Okay. Anything else with the ARP funds? Okay. Moving on then to the the the, the solution. Dissolution of the Building Oversight Committee. You'll have to read the draft one because that's. The, um, th this was something that was proposed or requested by um, um, Kurt Berner, um, the sheriff, and the judge that the need for the Building Oversight Committee, uh, once the. Is it the. Um, sorry, I was looking for the. Design. Design, thank you. Um, once the design phase is done, then the um, requirement by state law, by Supreme Court, no longer is in effect. And I believe, if I remember correctly, I think most decisions have been going to the property committee. Yes, any, they have. Anyhow, so the property, property committee would essentially take over any responsibilities that might be left over by the Building Oversight Committee. So they were requesting that there be a, a resolution dissolving the Building Oversight Committee. And there's already been discussion. Then there's a meeting of the Building Oversight Committee on August 16th at 6, um, where they will be thanked for their for their service and those and types and of things. You're contacting all the members? Correct. Yep. Okay. yep. My office sets up that meeting. So, um, so I can read this real quick just for people for their for their information. So whereas in, in December 2019, the Building Oversight Committee was created and given the authority to gather information regarding the type of facility, the Jail Justice Center, that would be appropriate for the county based on its needs. And whereas the Building Oversight Committee was also given authority to use funds from the Building Fund uh, for operating expenses. And whereas the Building Oversight Committee was designated as the Oversight Committee for the Building Project through the completion of such project. And whereas the Property Committee has assumed the responsibility of overseeing the Justice Center Building Project and subsequent remodeling of the existing courthouse. And whereas upon completion of the design phase of the Justice Center Project, the Building Oversight Committee will no longer be needed and the Property Committee will continue to oversee the project through its completion. Now be it resolved that the Building Oversight Committee is dissolved upon completion of the design phase of the Justice Center Project and the Property Committee will continue overseeing the project through its completion. I'll move to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second by George. And Chuck, can I uh, just fill in George on this? Because this came up four days. The property committee approved this four days ago. Kurt Berner was there to give us uh, all the pertinent background information. And I also spoke for a few minutes to explain my role and what's happening. So uh, as a courtesy to you and, and to spread to other board members. Um, when, the, when the resolution to dissolve the committee came, <coughs> When I first saw it, it, must, it might be a month or maybe two months ago, I 
reacted negatively because I felt that the committee should meet at least once to formally uh, pass on the responsibility to the property committee that, that we should not that the, the county board yet created the, the building committee but the county board should not simply um, abruptly and summarily shut the door and say you're done so that, and so John I sent an email to John uh, and everybody else who was on the committee I talked to John Hassan and I talked to the judge and I talked to the sheriff and John um, has uh, complied with my request by scheduling um, John is chair of that committee mm -hmm. is by scheduling a final meeting and I as I haven't seen the agenda but I assume that will be the really the agenda of the meeting uh, of that committee at this final meeting will to be to uh, dissolve itself and to, to say we have finished our uh, we have finished our we were an ad hoc committee we have finished our task and uh, we we now uh, transfer responsibility to the property committee and there was one other um, stipulation in there I did personally call the sheriff and I personally called the judge and talked to them about this because I they those are the two biggest stakeholders in the whole project and uh, the judge mentioned that we could not dissolve the building committee until the um, courts administrator had reviewed the plans and approved the plans and the, that man's name is Pat Brummond so we were waiting for the or I was waiting for that I said, well unless, unless until mr. Brummond gives the stamp of approval we really can't do anything so apparently that has happened that's what Kurt reported to us Thursday can, can I tell something the, the design isn't done yet yeah. so the way this resolution is written it's when it's done it will dissolve so it's but we haven't seen any have so within there and there still is a problem so but it does say when when the design is done it will, they were just late July or early August it is isn't it's not yet because I, mean, I haven't seen any bid packages yet no it's not a well, bid package it's well, not a bid design will be in that hasn't even gone up for bids yet. no it's not the big package that's required it's approval of the plan of the of the design and the the, the court administrator had to do that so that's the last word I had I'll on check it with Kurt to make sure I'm, I'm not sure I'll have to call Kurt after this I anticipate the judge will be part of the meeting on the 16th I anticipate Judge will be part of the meeting on, on that Monday evening since he's on the committee, hopefully, anyhow. Um, yeah, there's uh, the Supreme Court has certain requirements on size of courtrooms and size of jury boxes and size of tables and witness stands, right. all that kind of stuff. So those are the types of things. So I think once those are approved, then that's, then that's sufficient. I think, well, if I think we should just go ahead with the meeting, go ahead with the resolution. The judge can still put the kibosh on it at that final meeting. The judge has been the most, um, what, the person most attentive to these details throughout this whole process so going on over a year now yep. and I would imagine that Judge Radke will say something if the court administrator has not approved because he mentioned to me there was something about the size of the jury rooms or the seating capacity or something like that that was not yet settled and this would have been about a month ago but we did talk about them being able still to come to the property committee meeting of changes Absolutely. the, the yeah. property oh, committee sure. still does have oversight over right. it and to make that right. clear that, it, that we still consider an important part of the whole thing and, yeah. and, and if an issue arises on. come to the property committee right. and when we can make adjustments mm -hmm. but but the the uh, I guess the, <clears throat> the sense I got from both the judge and the sheriff was that yes we should it is time to dissolve the building committee and it was just this one stipulation so, just Go ahead, George. The chair, a, a resolution has been read. Are you are you willing to entertain a motion? I thought did we have a mo I thought somebody had. We have a motion. We have a motion. Or do we do? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do we, we do? Then? Don't we? We've oh, got a motion. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that in your agenda for the building committee would have that they would. Boy, somebody's laughing at home right now. Also. Because they're going to be acknowledged at that. Oh, at the board at meeting the as board well. Meeting. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. I think when I when we get the agenda out, we'll let the committee members know that we'd like them to stick around for the there board meeting go. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's okay. Okay. So, are there any further discussions on the motion to dissolve the oversight committee? All those in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. 
Okay, number 10, opiod litigation update. Got a little Here we go. <laughs> got a little information, probably not as much as we'd like to have at the moment, but I think many of you know that there is a tentative settlement in regards to the opioid litigation that's going on. And I say tentative because a number of approvals will have to be required yet. I'll go over those. Um, the tentative settlement is worth $26 billion. Um, and it's with a B. With a B, yep. Um, and it is with Johnson & Johnson and the distributors of um, the, the medications. Um, payments would be spread out over a period of time, so they would be annual payments that would be made to the entities that would be receiving them. Um, and this involves more than just the state of Wisconsin, so that's why I say all state attorney generals who are involved have 30 days to decide if they want to participate in the settlement. And if they do approve participation in the settlement, then the next step will be is for individual litigants, which would be Trumple County included, would have 120 days from then to decide if they want to participate in the settlement. I, I, we don't have numbers yet as to what this is going to mean for individual municipalities. Um, the talk is that 70% would go to locals, municipalities, or entities, 30% to the state. If for some reason that can't be agreed upon, there is a default provision which would say, which would put 15% to the state, 15% to the local municipalities or entities, and then 70% would go into what they call a collective fund, um, which could be divvied out, but that would largely be controlled by the state if that's the one, if that's the way it goes. So the 70-30 is the proposed at the moment, but if for some reason that does not get approved, the, the settlement agreement pr provides for the default of the 15, 15, and 70. Um, again, the actual numbers, we don't have that yet um, until approvals happen. Um, and then there's gonna be an allocation formula that will determine what each entity gets, um, so we'll have to keep you posted on those numbers. Um, but bottom line is at some point the board will have to take action on whether to participate in the settlement. So, Can I ask a question? <coughs> who, who makes the decision um, to approve or disapprove the 70-30 formula? I believe that is at the state level. That's at the mm -hmm. state level. Yep. Okay. And there are, there, my, my understanding from news reports is the, the, the number you, the 28 billion, 27, 26 billion, 26 yep. billion is, is the maximum amount, but that depends on how many municipalities, um, states and municipalities decide to um, participate. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. That would be correct. How, how soon, and the state you say has, well, 30 days from last week sometime. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, any word on where they're at with that? I have not heard anything as of yet, anyhow. And it so. would be the, would it be the Attorney General with the legislature's approval or just the Attorney General or just the legislature who would approve? Um, I, su I suspect that the legislature would need to approve it considering that there's also the, the distribution percentages. Mm -hmm. I suspect that they would also have to have a, have a say in it as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to hear the 120 day that gives us, mm -hmm. my, my impression from the news reports was it was like you got two weeks to decide. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our, um, the attorneys who are handling the litigation, uh, they will continue to, we did a um, Zoom meeting last week and so that's where I got a lot of this information from. Um, once the AG approves it, then they'll have more, so I'll get more details of information as it goes along. So hopefully get some more updates in regards to that. So. One other question. I think my recollection from the, again, the news reports is that um, any money that comes to the county or this municipality has to be used for um, uh, mi mitigation related to um, the, the epidemic. In other words, um, treatment or whatever. Correct, yep, okay. that would be correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Okay, anything else? Okay, FEMA funds, is that gonna be you, Paul? Yep, but there isn't anything really to uh, update because we have not heard anything from FEMA. They've gotten all our information, for the first submission anyway. And uh, we have a meeting with Integrity today at one that uh, we can see if they've heard anything. You'll know more after that. And then uh, that meeting also will be with them to talk about the rental and utility assistance program under ARPA, which is not our ARPA money that we are getting. It's separate, another pot of money, federal money, that that uh, we probably will ask Integrity to help us with. Okay. Okay. County budget update. Okay. That's me, too. <laughs> uh, I sent out the, uh, Thanks, the budget Rick. information. 
Not last week. Must have been the week, huh? Pretty harsh Did I put it in there? Because I, 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 it's not really harsh. It's just that people are. <laughs> be saying a zero if, percent if you, increase. Yeah, if you want to, you have. To, if, if you want to raise your budget, you're going to have to find funds. That's and basically what we're at. Uh, when and that, that we new will construction be watching comes your in. levy request. I, it's, it's I did. I, I, I was a little harsh in it, and yeah. uh, we'll be able to tell because on the budget sheets, you'll see what their levy was last year, and you'll see what it will be they're asking for this year. Hopefully that a lot of them will be um, creative in finding more income so from tax levy, not from tax levy, I should say. So I just... Again, Mr. Chair, I apologize. The, um, the any wage and health insurance increases will have to be covered with the change in new construction, if any. Is that has that been a standing um, decision? Well, that's um, basically, you know, our our net new construction is usually only about a two percent increase. This last year it worked out nice because our health insurance premiums went down. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that saved us a lot in the contingency so there is some money in the contingency fund that we will be able to carry forward into the new year well and that's that that was the question i had is that i don't remember that this committee has ever made the decision that the increase in new the levy increase because of new construction goes towards uh health insurance increases no it doesn't well no because you're gonna have to decide on levy what what you're going to use that increase in in levy right but and in most cases it's always been health insurance and wages right and the, the wages will be determined by the personal recommendations bargaining. personal bargaining will come with the recommendations right. so i was a little harsh yes i'm sorry but i just wanted to any word on health insurance at all huh any word on health insurance we don't no get that until september all. yeah they don't give you any inkling or hear what uh, okay nope. uh Retirement rates went down, so that's a little cushion that we have. It's not going to be much, but I mean, it's. One of the things well, that we, we go through this every year, George, I'm going to praise Paul for, for setting something of a hard line because we go through this every year. I mean, the only real increase in the budget ever is new construction. And that is supposed to cover both wage and health insurance. We every every year every year we sit down at those committee meetings, and the the PB committee has already decided what wages are going to be. So that shoots that down. So then there's nothing left for health insurance. I mean, somebody's got to say stop at some point. And that's basically what I did. If you look at your general fund update that you right, got today, right. all of those things that. Um, you okayed, so you increased somebody's budget by these, came from the general fund. But next year now, or for this time around, they're thinking this is going to be free levy money now. Well, so, not free levy money. Well, technically, you know, if you gave, gave an increase to something, now it's in their budget. They should keep getting it. And they should keep getting it. Well, Paul, and I mean, clarify, some of these things are one-time necessary purchases. If the, they're one-time, then they won't be in the budget for right, next year. Exactly. The, um, the body scanner, for instance, or the um, uh, card reader system, or, uh, um, you know, things like the core tech upgrades, things like that. So, yeah, it's not... Um, not all of these are permanent budget items. These were yeah, one-time things. I'm interrupting. So I all right, cut me off if you have to, John. <laughs> uh, because, I, because I can see this come. I mean, the biggest increase is always wages. It, I mean, it's either wages or health insurance or both of them. It's not body scheme. We're not. That's not the big deal. It's wages. So a quarter percent change in wage. You know, if it's a zero percent increase in wages, if that goes from a zero to a quarter to a half to whatever. That number, which the PB committee sets almost without thinking, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, almost without thinking about the consequences, that is the biggest number, that, that's the number that controls the budget. So if the PB committee says 1%, then that puts us under a certain amount of constraint. If the PB committee says 2%, that puts us under twice as much constraint. That's the big number, not the body scanners. So if, if, if you want to fight again this year, 
I, I remember arguing about this last year that you wish it should be lower that we have to restrain that those wages and find other ways of attracting talent and so forth that that's going to be the that's going to be the fight and I, I'll stop at that point <laughs> yeah the thought is out there anyway so <laughs> so probably at our September meeting is when we'll start we'll schedule, meetings. Uh, schedule yeah. meetings. Oh, I say that the deadline that I have for departments to turn in their budgets is the 27th of August. So, and a couple of departments, uh, because I just sent it out the end of July, always like to present their budget to their committee first, right. and that that puts some constraint on because. I'm going to use DLM as an example. We they got the information, and their meeting is day after tomorrow already. So technically, Becky should have her budget done by day after tomorrow, and it's not going to happen. So um, it's it's going to be tough on some some departments that have early committee meetings. Other departments actually don't go through their committee. I mean, they tell their committee what they did and. That's about it. So, so when we have our meeting on Wednesday, we're going to have to tell people, if you're not ready, we're going to have to schedule a special meeting you could do to that. deal with yep. budget. Yeah, I think we've done that. Yeah. Okay, anything else so on the that, budget? That item will stay on the agenda now till, till November. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're done with that then? Uh, what do we want to do for our next meeting? Tuesday? I was just going to say the first Monday is Labor Day. Tuesday the seventh. We want to go right after day after Labor Day. We do have the twenty. Yeah, we already have the twenty twenty fourth one, but that should basically just, just redistrict. That's just for redistricting. That's just for redistricting. Yeah. Oh, you we can wanna, throw, We've thrown other item agendas in there once in a while. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to do that. No. Seven. And um, I, I was hoping you were going to say September seventh because um, that that would be when the auditors come and give their final report to this committee. And then they would also come to um, September County Board and give the final uh, audit report. So September 7th, uh, 9 o'clock, okay with everyone? Yes. Do you start school yet? Oh, yeah. Are we going wow. to 8? Are we going to go to 8 then? No, we, no. I'm going to make them do Give that. you later classes. <laughs> yeah. You should retire. Yeah. Yeah. Well... Well, my first yeah. day with the kids is the 26th of August. I got to try. The first day with our kids is the 26th of August. Oh, yeah. You can only do so okay. much creative accounting. I got a property accounting. meeting right. that morning. morning. <laughs> sitting there every year tearing your ass. And what they're doing, is something they get summer school reimbursement from the state. No, and you can do that for up to three days. Things are That's why they're all doing it. Are we done? That falls in the summer school time frame. Yeah. Chuck, you, Chuck, you didn't adjourn yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Meeting adjourned at uh, 10.50. Or 10.55. 10.50 is right.